Good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional, and I hope you have your cup of coffee and your Bible with you. Uh, we'll be reading in the book of Romans this morning, uh, chapter 6, and uh, first couple of verses in that, in that chapter. Um, we want to continue our theme on death, burial, and resurrection with Christ, in Christ. Um, before we do that, let's have a word of prayer together. Father, I pray for your blessings on this day, that your grace would be upon us, once again, that we would, um, as we are talking about uh, being connected to your son, Jesus Christ, I pray that you would continue to make it more of a reality in us. We ask your blessings on this uh, community in which we live. We ask for Henderson that you would protect and give grace to those who need your strength and healing, need your protection from this virus. And some, uh, sadly, and, and we mourn with them, uh, we pray for those who have lost uh, loved ones due to the virus. We ask your grace to be upon us as we continue our day. In Jesus' name, amen. So I wanted to read uh, Romans chapter 6. And uh, yesterday I talked about our connection to Christ and his death. This morning I want to talk about his burial. But uh, read through the book of Romans, read Galatians, read Ephesians. Those are great books uh, when we're talking about this kind of thing. And, and, and again, I think there there is deliverance in this truth that uh, we're discussing, there is deliverance to the fact that we are connected with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. Deliverance from sin, deliverance from addiction, deliverance from all kinds of things as we meditate and uh, make it our life goal to walk more fully day to day in this revelation of, of how we are connected with Christ. But read through Romans, Galatians, and Ephesians, and you'll, and you'll see this repeated phrase in Christ, with Christ. Um, through Christ, that, that we are connected in a, in a very significant way in our day-to-day -day lives with Jesus. Paul says in Galatians, we talked about it yesterday, that I have been crucified with Christ. I, when I got to the cross, it wasn't just watching Jesus die on the cross. I participated. I was in Christ dying uh, to sin, in Christ dying to the law, in Christ dying to the flesh. And so um, Romans chapter 6 uh, continues that thought um, Paul says in verse 1, he says, what shall we say then? And this is, again, it's hard to just kind of pull this out of Romans because you have to read it in context. And it's just a great book to just get into and just start reading. But Romans chapter 6, verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? By no means. And then he goes on to explain, we died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? And so, so how do, when did we die to sin? Well, we died in the body of Christ. When, die, when Christ was uh, being crucified on the cross, we were connected. Christ, God put us in Christ. As soon as we accept Jesus into our heart, he puts us in Christ. He puts Christ in us. He puts us in Christ. And if we're put on in Christ, then we are put in everything that Christ has done. So we're connected to everything he has done. We did it in him, in the body of Christ. We did it in him. So we died to sin. How, long, how can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried, and this is the key verse, that we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. In order that, and this is the result, this is what God wanted, you know, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory, to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So that's the bottom line is that we're, the reason that we are connected to Jesus is because he want, Jesus wants us to walk in that newness of, of life. But in order to get there, we have to go through death, we have to go through burial, and then we, gotta, and then we come into resurrection. And the burial of, of Jesus is something that I've focused on. In, in a lot of my Easter sermons, I, I talk about the burial. A lot of people talk more about the resurrection or the death in that period of time. But um, I talk a lot about the burial because the burial is, is sig significant. Um, the burial is a period of time. Um, it's, it's like the cocoon where you go into the cocoon, you come out of the cocoon, but it's that time of, of being cocooned in this, in this tomb where um, a lot of Christians experience this and they don't know what they're experiencing. They go through a season of, of death uh, that uh, you've you can probably, as you're thinking right now, you're probably thinking of times in your life where there were seasons 
where it just seemed like God was so distant or it seemed like there was nothing working or there was like, there was just death was all, all around us. And that to me is a picture of, of the tomb um, where Jesus uh, went three days uh, and he was sealed in this death event. Um, and we're connected to that. And there are seasons in our life where we go through times of burial, where God allows us to go through these periods of time, these seasons, where it seems like death is all around us. Um, I, wrote, uh, I wrote a poem. Uh, actually, it wasn't a poem. It was just like a writing. But uh, uh, and, uh, during a time of, of death in my life, where I went through a season, and, and um, I talked about the tomb as being... Um, surrounded by uh, just this sense of death. The tomb is a, is a place where even Jesus is laying uh, dead and dormant and you cannot uh, connect with him. It's a, it's a time of silence. It's a long period, sometimes it seems forever, uh, where uh, we are going through something, this burial, and we can't get out of it. We pound on the door at the at the uh, that's pound on the stone trying to open the tomb, but we can't get out of it. It's a three day period of time, where God says, "I want you to stay in death for a while because I want uh, that thing in you, whatever He's dealing with, I want that to be eradicated." And, and so this this transitional time where we go into this this tomb um, and wait for God to do His thing in us, it's a very dark place. It's a, time, it's a place of silence. God is silent and we walk through the darkness. And so if you can think of times like that in your lives, the, the most redemptive thing I can say about it is probably that was a time where you went through the tomb. You went to, the, and, and, and I tell this to a lot of people, um, when you go through periods like this, the best thing to do is to say, God, I don't understand what's happening. Um, I don't have, understand all the implications or the theological uh, points on this thing, but I understand that I trust you. And so I can't hear you, I can't see you, I can't feel you, I'm in darkness, but I will sing in darkness what you have shown in light. And I've actually said that to God, I will sing in darkness what you have shown in light. Um, there are times when what the psalmist called we go down through the valley of the shadow of death. Um, and there are times in a Christian's life when you just kind of in this shadowy, foggy valley called death and you can't see anything. Um, you cannot hear anything from God. You cannot feel his presence. And that's a place of death. That's a place of, of, of uh, <laughs> the tomb. And especially for the new Christian, who one, the, the Christian who's been told Jesus, the life of Jesus is wonderful. It's just, you just, there's joy, peace, love, all this kind of wonderful stuff. All of a sudden, this new Christian goes into this tomb experience and says, what is going on? What is this? And um, so we all walk in, in this thing called, called death. And the results, again, are, are um, that God has something for us. He has something he wants us, he, he wants to birth in us. And as we go into the tomb, as we go through the death, into the tomb, uh, God wants us to come out the other side, a, a changed and, and different person. He wants us to be uh, free from that thing that has attached itself to us. And the only way to get there is, is through the death, uh, burial and resurrection connection to Jesus Christ. There's so much more to this. But I think as you as you reflect on it, as you think about it, and you meditate on these things, I, again, we, we I need to do a one day I'll do a, a sermon series on it, and I will hopefully maybe do a Bible study on it, where we can talk about what this means. Um, uh, watch uh, a wonderful author, and his name is Watchman Nee, uh, N E E is the last <clears throat> name. Um, I've read a couple of his books and, and just found them to be amazing in, in this regard. Uh, he wrote uh, a book called The Normal Christian Life. He wrote a book called um, The Release of the Spirit. Uh, I recommend those books highly. I, I read the book The Release of the Spirit um, and weeping, just weeping. Um, it talks about ministry and talks about how uh, sometimes we try to minister to people and what, yet what's inside of us 
cannot escape in our ministry. I can't, I can't share what's inside of me to show you this is what I'm trying to say to you so that you can receive it too. And there seems to be this sealed off uh, deal when we try to minister to people. And Watchman, he said basically that there are uh, there is a breaking that a Christian goes through that um, Paul says that we carry the gift of God in, in uh, vessels of clay. And um, he, he was referring at one point to uh, these, these jars of, of perfume and the, what they would do in, in those days of perfume. You, in order to get the perfume out, of, they'd have to crack the, the bottle. And if the, if the bottle was, or the, the clay bottle was cracked, then the perfume would would be able to come out, and so there's a there's a sense in which we are uh, these containers of Christ, and we are sealed, and until we until we are cracked, until we go through a time of suffering, then nothing that is inside of us can seep out uh, as this perfume would in, in Paul's situation, um, and so sometimes the dealings of God that He has to crack uh, the outer layer of our uh, Christianity in order for what's inside of us to seep through so people can smell the aroma of Christ uh, in us. And so that's all, you know, all of those things have to do with this Christ event, that we are connected with Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection. And, and so as we embrace that, as we pray toward that, um, things change in the way that we live our lives, in the way that people see us, and the way that people are affected by our ministries, and the way uh, they say, I want what you've got, that kind of thing. All of that's affected by the fact that we walk um, in the truth, the, the theological truth, that we have been uh, crucified, buried, and resurrected in Christ. Um, let's pray. Father, thank you for your love for us, and we thank you for your word uh, that continues uh, to shed light and educate us, not in just an academic way, but in a way that we find truth, and this truth sets us free. I pray that you would... Um, Show us continually, day to day, today and the next day and the next day through throughout our, the rest of our Christian walks, these truths and how they apply to us, how we have been connected to Christ and his, res, and his crucifixion and his burial and in his resurrection. Help us to walk in these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. We'll see you tomorrow and talk again.